All right, hey everybody, this is Joe from ToughPigs.com and I'm here with two very special guests. We've got Ryan Dillon, Sesame Street puppeteer, performer of Elmo. Hi, Ryan. Hello, Tough Pigs, hi. And uh, next to Ryan, kind of, sort of, is uh, his partner in crime, puppeteer, and YouTube sensation, Mark Gale. Hey, Mark. Hi, Joe. Hi, Tough Pigs. You're How a are sensation. You? Did, you, did you know that, Mark, that you are a sensation? He knows. I did know, yes. He knows, trust me. Know. Well, for, for those of you who don't recognize his voice immediately, uh, a lot of puppetry fans and YouTube fans would might recognize him from Frank the Horse, uh, which we're, we're definitely going to be talking about Frank the Horse a bit. So we'll, we'll come back around to you for that, Mark. Very good. I'll be waiting. Great. I'll be waiting right here, Joe. Uh, so first of all, um, you guys uh, are both, even though you, you have worked with the Muppets, with Sesame Street, throughout your careers. Um, you both started out as fans, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, we were both super fans. Mark was a super fan before that was really a thing with Muppets. Um, yeah. I am a generation zero for Sesame Street. So yeah. I've been, I, I was there before anybody. There we go. Wow. The 70s. Yeah, the 70s. Amazing. Uh, so what, what yeah, we was kinda it? had a similar life uh, experience. I mean, we both started doing puppetry to Sesame Street when we were single digits. And I mean single digits. Two years old. Yeah, it's funny. Two, I three was years just old. explaining to somebody yesterday or the other day. They were asking about like how'd you get in the puppets and stuff and it had occurred to me that the first thing I'd ever seen on television was the Muppet Show. I remember the Muppet Show opening when I was, I, I was probably no older than two. And it like, it was like, like Billy West says, molecular destruction. I was just like, what am I, why? I could not believe what I was seeing. It was, it, it blew my mind. And from that day on, it was just an obsession. And, and um, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead, go, go. Uh, was that uh, like, did it, was it an immediate thing for you guys that you knew from, from a, an early age you were oh. a big fan that like, I gotta, I gotta be a puppeteer or I gotta yeah. work for these guys. Yes. I wanted to be a puppeteer before I knew what a puppeteer was. I called it a puppet man. I want to be a puppet man and that's it. And that's all I ever wanted to do. My parents bought me a cookie monster puppet for my, I think second birthday. And it, it, that is all I started doing, sitting in front of the television and, and doing the shows for my, for myself where my, Vision is the is the television screen and you know the other puppets you know. What's and hilarious is I used to do the same exact. We've talked about this. I used to do the same exact thing because I don't know why it didn't occur to me to look into a mirror when I was a child. But I would. <laughs> <laughs> it's this is like severe mental illness. I would look. I would just do my own shows for myself. I would put on a Muppet record and I would do the shows for myself. And right. we did that. I think my yeah. I was an Uber fan and I you know I did the whole Tough Pigs thing as well when I was a kid and. Because for me, it was all about getting as much knowledge as possible to learn as much about this art form as I could immediately. I was like, this is my school. I need to, and thank God, I, I, just when I was starting to learn about how to really do it, the internet was just becoming a thing. And so I had access to not much, but some video things and some photos and some things I could pull. And I was a puppet builder too, so I used to, you know, research on how you made certain shapes of puppet heads. Nothing existed at the time, but you're a spoiled, spoiled, spoiled millennial. Well, the yeah. kids now. Is, let me wait. tell you, I, I got to take my glass off. The kids are spoiled. You understand? I had to wait. This is what I. This is how crazy I I was, Joe. I would uh, watch. So Sesame Street would air three times a day on PBS. I'd catch it in the morning, and I would sit there and write down the bits that were on the show, and then get out the puppets for them so that for the noon showing, I was ready, and then I would perform the show for myself at noon. And I would even write out credits and roll them on a piece of paper in front of my face. Okay, everybody, I want you to rewind this video and listen to that again. Because... That's and and, and that's also, on. like, that's not so far off from what you guys do now on YouTube, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, everybody! Good night! <laughs> Goodbye! No, we um we I I wasn't that far down the rabbit hole, but it oh, was you were close. you were was, oh I had my own mental illnesses, but I mean that we were that was for me for me it was one of two things I I either 
wanted to be a, an animator for Disney or I wanted to work for the Muppets. And I didn't originally know at what capacity because I was, when I was young, I was, you know, I was a ham and stuff, but I was also shy in front of people I didn't know. So I thought, I don't think I could be a performer. Maybe I'll just make the puppets. Um, and so, but I also thought Disney, being a Disney animator, like that's never going to happen. So I'll just try and work for the Muppets, which is ridiculous. I mean, they're both like super lofty goals. Um, but yeah, once I had decided that, that was it. I had no other plan. I had no backup plan. I was just like, I'm going to work for the Muppets or I'm going to do some puppet thing. Still don't. We still have no backup plan. Yeah. <laughs> well, well. So Ryan, I, I want to kind of back up a little bit with your with your bio. So uh, yeah. you you auditioned for Sesame Street when you were in high school. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. I um, I was seventeen, and I there was an open call for Muppet performers, and it was at the time that Disney had just purchased the Muppets. And so, as you remember, there was a lot of hullabaloo over that audition. And I was just sort of like, God, what do I do? Because I really just, I just, I knew that the Muppets didn't audition. I knew it. And I was like, this is it. They will never do this again. And I thought, I just have to see what this is all about. So I, I remember calling Joe Roddy at Henson and begging and saying, listen, I'm 17. Because it was for 18 and up. I was like, I'm 17. I really, I really want to do this. And I think I have a shot at it. And they were like, okay, that's very nice. But whatever. And then when I find, I called them again and I said, listen, I, I, I really want to be there. And they finally just, I think they were sick of hearing from me. So they said, fine, <laughs> we'll, we'll, uh, we'll let you go. Thinking like, well, just bring this kid in and, you know, show him the door when he's done. And, uh, I got there and it was, it was a lot of people. It was easily over 150, 200 people easily. Wow. And, um, a lot of people that, you know, were in the business were all, cause there wasn't, you know, at that time, again, there were no ways to audition other than this. They weren't really doing consistent workshops at that time. So we went in and I um, puppeteered. I think the first thing was just lip syncing in front of a mirror. And I remember it was Jane Henson, Martin Baker, Kevin Clash, uh, and a ton of other people that I'm not remembering. But I remember looking at the panel and thinking like, oh my God, great. So I was freaking out and, um, you know, I was my, I was, I was a super nerd. I brought my own like ping pong balls with the eyes on them and stuff. And what a nerd. Yeah. I was prepared, man. And so I, uh, I, I did the whole thing in front of the mirror and then they would put us in smaller groups. So I got cut into a group of five and then that group of five got cut down to just me. And then they did monitor work and I, I, they made us lip sync to Sammy Davis Jr.'s candy man. And every time I hear it now, it's like immediately like I get sick. I, my stomach starts to, I can't hear it and, 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 and not think about it. So <laughs> I, I did that audition. And then I remember Kevin said to me, um, he goes, I need you to stay. I need you to stay until the end of the day. And I was like, what does that mean? Like, that's all he said. And I was like, and that rhymed, by the way. And it rhymed too. He's such a poet. Um, man. So, yeah, right. Exactly. Uh, and so I, I was like, okay. So I waited all day. It was hours. It was like four and a half hours. And I'm just waiting, waiting, spending four and a half hours panicking. Like, did I do something wrong? Did I say something inappropriate? I just, you know, I'm in my own head about it. So uh, finally, Kevin's about to walk out the door and everyone's left. And uh, I mean, they cut almost everybody. It was, I think there were maybe 15, 10, 12 people at the end of the day. Kevin's walking and I said, oh, excuse me, I'm so sorry, but you asked me to stay. And he was like, oh yeah, um, we're gonna put you on the parade and you're, you're gonna work this season. Uh, Henson's gonna be in contact with you. And I was like, I couldn't, I could not believe what I just heard. And it was one of those moments in your life where you hear something, but it doesn't really register because totally. it's, yeah. it's ridiculous. They're going to be working on the parade. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly. The whole room just sort of started to spin. It got smaller and smaller. Um, and so, yeah, so then I did the parade that year. I did Ernie in the parade and then immediately started working on the season and it was just a crazy, it was nuts. I mean, I couldn't believe what was happening and I was totally not ready, but, um, I learned a lot very quickly and, um, yeah. So, so what kind of stuff did you do when they got you on the show? Like what I'm assuming you're doing right hands. Like, did you get to do background characters? I did. I, uh, Kevin was really was really keen on letting me do background characters. 
Um, and I remember the first thing I did, well, the first day I right-handed because Gina had adopted a baby and it was all of the, all of the human cast. Cause that, I, I, that was another thing. My first day, everyone was there. Like everybody was there. Snuffy was there. Big Bird was there. And like all the Muppets were there, but also Bob was there and Susan and Luis and Maria. I was just like, I could not, again, I couldn't believe what was happening to me. It's, it's your I, childhood. You're working at, like with your childhood. It, it, right. Just, it, it, right. But it, 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 it felt weirdly familiar too. It, it was just, it was a strange experience. Like it, it was, it was all encompassing. It was just crazy. But I was right handing and I failed. I was an awful right hand that day. Uh, really bad. And uh, history books bad. And I was like, that's it. I'm done. Like Kevin's going to see this and he's going to say, well, get this kid out of here. I have no idea what he's doing. We try. Like, yeah. <laughs> because right handing, you don't, you can't teach yourself right handing. The only way you can learn it is by doing it because you, you know, you can't just sit there in front of a mirror and do this. <laughs> you can't, what are you going to do? So, um, but uh, yeah, that day was awful. And I came back and, and God bless him. Kevin was super patient with me. And, um, so yeah, he let me do a bunch of stuff. I did a chicken, um, with Oscar. I remember sitting next to Carol Spinney and he's doing Oscar. And that was me, me, Carol Spinney. And, um, I can't remember who was in the scene with us, but it was one of the human actors. And that was crazy. So yeah, the first few weeks I did a lot of AMs and then I, I'd had a couple speaking parts. Um, which doesn't happen. I mean, it, I think part of part of what was helpful for me was that getting in was that there were a lot of shows in production at the time with puppets. So they were losing some of their performers to other shows because they would be in production at the same time. Oh, yeah. so a lot of it was like, okay, all of our hands are busy. You know, we've, all of our puppeteers are busy and we've got this one last line. Give it to the kid because who else, there's no one here. <laughs> so I think that's... Well, lucky, I guess. I mean, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm very grateful for all those other shows. Um, but uh, so yeah, that's kind of how I started, and I did that for a while. Um, and you know, I would I would vacillate back and forth. There were some really busy years. There were some lean years, and then I started to really get back at Sesame around like two thousand eight or nine, I would say, and that's when I started to really come back in a big way and do stuff for them pretty consistently. Um, nice. Well, yeah. I, I do want to. I do want to segue into. I want to. We got to talk about Elmo a bit, but before we do, Mark has been so patient. He's. Yeah. I, I, he is very. Mad. He's pissed. I can guarantee he's mad right now. I'm furious. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's your turn now. So you did he leave? a life story. Some things. Some things happened to me too. Well, let's let's hear about one or two of those things. Not too many, but let's. <laughs> I know. Check up all the time. Mark, how did, so you you have worked with the Muppets in the past as well, yeah, and yeah, now I want to know how you how you got you're in. How'd you get your foot in the door? Long, strange journey for me. Um, well, when I you know I had really supportive parents when I was a kid, so they got me hooked up with uh, Puppeteers of America, and uh, so I was. And at the time, you know, growing up in the late seventies, early eighties. At, at the puppet festivals, I was the only kid there. I thought I was the only one in the in, in the world who was, you know, of the of this next generation doing this thing. Uh, I mean, there were other kids there, but you know, they were they weren't puppeteers. They were like uh, children of the puppeteers who were there. You know, nobody it seemed like was doing it, it was actually being a puppeteer. So I started doing the the potpourris and uh, I did one in uh, eighty in the eighty three festival where uh, Frank Oz uh, came to uh, give a master presentation that uh, uh, got hooked up with uh, Mike Osnowitz had seen me do this uh, potpourri show that I had done lip syncing to uh, Men at Works Down Under. Nice. And, that's uh, that's Frank's father. Who loved for yes, people. Frank Oz's uh, uh, father, Mike Osnowitz, and he grabs me and you know uh, takes me over to, to, to Frank the next day. And you get you got to meet this kid. And uh, oh my god, I was like meeting God. And uh, <laughs> he he was wonderful. He was uh, you know he was so nice to to me and my parents. And my dad is like, well, what do we do with this kid? I mean, he's you know he's how do we what is the what is the trajectory here? What do we do? And he, he was nice enough to say, well, you know, um, take him to Fraggle Rock. You know, just tell him I, you know, I sent you. You know, here's the contact info. And uh, it, was it that easy? It was, just it was send him to Fraggle Rock. Right, just go. Just tell him you're Frank's friend. Okay, <laughs> well, we're Frank's friends. 
Uh, so we, we worked it out with my school. I, I had just started middle school and was able to take a week out of school to uh, go do an educational trip. I had to, you know, give a presentation when I came back. With slides. What show were you there for? What episode were you there for? I was there for the Grapes of Generosity. Mm. So when Gobo is floating, he's floating all the way through the, uh, the episode. Because if you eat the Grapes of Generosity and you don't share them, you float. You Life lesson. Life lesson. Be, don't eat the grapes uh, yourself, Joe. Okay, so so I get so I'm, I get to be at Fraggle Rock for a week. You know, Jerry Nelson comes up to me. He's like, "Oh, you guys are Frank's friends, huh?" Yeah. So, uh, but I, you know, I was able to, you know, make friends with all of the the main guys at at Fraggle uh, that week, and stayed in touch with them ever since then. A few years later, uh, at uh, MIT in Boston, Jim and Frank were, were uh, doing a, a festival. So I went to that, and uh, that's where I met uh, Tim Lagasse and some of the, the UConn people. But that's also where I met, got to meet Jim Henson. Frank, you know, had remembered me from before, and said, oh, this is the kid. And by this time, everybody at Fraggle Rock knew who I was, so... You know, Frank takes me backstage afterwards and introduces me to, to Jim. And uh, Jim was nice enough to meet with me uh, wow. the day for an hour. And I got to talk to Jim Henson for a full hour. Wow. Uh, which was, I mean, you know, one of the greatest moments of my life. But I was also uh, terrified, too. I was so, my, my God, just telling the story makes me nervous. Uh, I was so nervous to, to, to meet him. Uh, that I was almost you know, hoping that he wouldn't show, you know. Uh, but I see him, uh, I, he was late to the meeting about 10 minutes, and I was just about ready to walk, and I see him come out of a building way across the campus, and I can see him because he's, you know, he's eight feet tall, and he's wearing a white suit, uh, white pants, white hat with a big feather coming out of the top of it. <laughs> Jim the pen. And, uh, and that was great. You know, he, he was so nice. And I was trying to figure out what to do about going to college. You know, do I just, I really would, you know, want to join them, you know, work for you. And, uh, and you know, he was just nice to give some uh, life advice. And, uh, you know, less than a year later, he died. So uh, I always look at that as, wow, God, what, what luck that I actually, you know, had got to have that little bit of, of time uh, with him. Jim Hansen bought him orange juice. He bought me a glass of orange juice, Joe. I got well, that, but how, how did you bury the lead like that? <laughs> <laughs> I know. Let's well, start over. We can edit that out. We can start over. You have to send in the picture of you with Jim. It's it's up there above oh, Mark. You can't okay. tell. It looks like a, a lovely young girl sitting next to Jim Hansen. Right. That's actually I was, Mark Gale. I, I was the prettiest girl at the MIT. I met, I met with this gorgeous young woman at the MIT. But it's actually, it's really Mark Gale. Did, did the orange juice make it into the picture? Oh. It didn't, I, I drank it. I, I really wish the juice was there. It, it, it's not. It's never good uh, enough for Mark. Well, right now it's on display at the Museum of the Moving Image. The That's right. If you go to the museum <laughs> in the back, way in the back. Yeah, I've got me and Jim Henson in a picture, but I really wish that orange juice was in there, too. <laughs> <laughs> It's the um the the thing that Mark was there for is on YouTube, I think. The MIT talk with Jim Henson and Frank yeah. Oz is on YouTube. Yes, audience. Uh, for so that. you can watch it and uh, think of little Mark Gale in the audience. Right. Sipping on his orange juice. Sipping on in, his, in the front. In the front. orange juice. Yes. Long, beautiful hair. Yes. Right. Oh, it's, it's so flowing, so beautiful. <laughs> uh, so so you uh I I you've got a few Muppet credits uh on your yeah. on your imdb there so how did you go from being a fan who one time got orange juice from jim henson to actually <laughs> getting on the payroll that's where the story gets a little bit weird uh well so i had met the yukon puppeteers at the uh at that festival i met tim lagasse and uh, a couple years later they had the first uh o'neill puppetry conference and uh that was uh, run in uh, Waterford, Connecticut by uh, Marty Robinson, Kathy Mullen, uh, Pam Marciero, um, some other people. And uh, that's where I met Tim and uh, Peter Lenz was there and some other people. And uh, yeah, Tim convinced me to come to UConn. Uh, so 
that's what I did. I uh, transferred for, I was going uh, to Indiana University at the time, transferred to UConn and went through the puppetry program there. Um, and then, but when I graduated, the, the work was just really slow at, at Muppets. It was, this was the, the mid nineties and there just wasn't a lot of uh, work going on. And I'm not a builder. So I was really scared to move to the, you know, big bad New York city. So I kind of, I kind of left the scene right at go time, you know, right when I kind of should have stayed and just, you know, waited by the phone in terror. Uh, but I, so I ended up getting a little sidetracked and, uh, you know, I was uh, the late nineties, early two thousands. I had wanted to sort of get back into the scene, but I didn't really, again, didn't, I was too afraid to, 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 to move to New York without any, uh, building skills to keep me afloat, uh, you know, when there wasn't the work. So I went and worked at uh, Disney World. They had just opened up the Bear the Big Blue House live show down at the park, and they needed people with uh, puppetry skills. And yeah, I just kind of walked in off the street and uh, had everything that they, they wanted. And uh, so I started doing that. It's about this time that uh, they, they did uh, Kermit's Swamp Years down in Orlando. Oh, nice. So I, I got uh, to be uh, on that. And that's what kind of started, started things up again. Uh, but because it, it, it seemed like they were, if Kermit Swamp Ears had been a success, they were talking about doing uh, more and more stuff down at the at Disney World in, in Orlando. But it, it didn't really happen. So I realized, look, if I really want to do this, I got to get back up to the, the New York area. And... Uh, so I did. I moved back up to Connecticut to, you know, nearby. I took a regular day job and uh, but uh, was, you know, able to have nice enough uh, people to let me go in. And, you know, I did a, a, a day at Sesame Street here and there. And uh, uh, this is about the time that uh, I met Ryan. Yeah, we <laughs> met in 2006, right? Yeah. Um, at a workshop that Sesame was holding because there was a Christmas special coming up. And they wanted, they were going to need extra hands for it. And I had been with Sesame for like a year at that point. And Mark was on the, the Henson, you know, the top of the puppeteer list at Henson for people to call for workshops and stuff and for, you know, background stuff. And so I had heard about Mark through people. Um, but we got into I heard about Ryan. I had no idea who Ryan was. And I get to the, the workshop and there's this kid. There, there's this little kid there. I'm like, who in the hell is this little kid? Well, I felt really self-conscious because Marty and, and Martin, Kevin and everybody kept like bringing me up to do right hands and stuff. Here's how we do right hands. And I was like, oh, no. Because I, in my mind, I, that's what was going on in my mind. All these people going like, who is this kid? Yeah, who she think he, he is? You get to the, you're going to get to the back of the line. The back of the line. So, but anyhow, we were, we were, uh, Kevin put us all together in pairings to come up with a scene. There was no direction. It was just sort of like, come up with a story. And we got paired together and it was like crazy. It was like a hundred people or something crazy like that. And, um, the minute we started talking, we were like, oh, well, this is it. I mean, this best friends, best friends, best friends immediately. In the, it was, it was love at first sight. Yeah, it really was. We, we well, no, gave each other's right, first right hand. Time. Yeah, it was eight at first sight, and then it was love second sight. Right, and then we we did a scene, we did it a couple times, and it was just some silly. I have it somewhere. I should pull it out. I have it somewhere, um, and uh, people seemed to think it was fun and silly. And then th from that moment on, we were like, okay, well, we didn't start immediately working on stuff together, but we both were like, I gotta remember that guy. Um, did did you, did you guys get hired for that Christmas special? Uh, I was on it, and then I think, were you, Mark, you were doing Seymour's, well, right? I Yeah, I was doing a Seymour's Playhouse mm -hmm. um, with uh, Frankie Cordero, our good friend Frank, and a bunch of other, David Stevens was on that. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I wasn't on, I wasn't on the Christmas special. But it sort of, that, I guess around that time, I can't remember when that was, that may have been when we started to first do stuff with Frank the Horse, too, together. Maybe like 2007, 2008, probably. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, I do want to talk about Frank the Horse some more. But I'm going to use this opportunity to flip back around to what we were talking about before. So let's 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 get back to Elmo. for. Oh, uh, first I want to say, sorry, I do want to say, yeah. you need to tell people, Mark, what to look for in the things that you've done. Who, who did you do where? You're talking to tough people. Oh. Specifically what you've oh, done. 
Yeah, yeah. We're gonna we're gonna be looking for this. We're gonna be finding the screenshot and circling. Oh my and... god! Let me tell you about raccoon number two <laughs> in the uh, life as a pet uh, number in Kermit Swamp Years. You yeah, watch, classic. You know, and you're gonna be amazed because he runs by there being a boulder or something, a big wheel or something, and he is freaking out. He uh, he he runs into the scene. He looks back and, ah, and runs right on through. That's me. <laughs> Wow. Uh, let's, I did all kinds of stuff in that. I, I was uh, the little fat frog in the front of the uh, aquarium a lot of the time. I did I did a lot of things uh, all throughout that uh, that uh, that movie. Um, uh, I was also in. Uh, here's an interesting one: is uh, the three D movie, four D movie that they have over in uh, the Universal Japan. You're huge uh, in Japan. Also, Huge in Japan. I am the I am Narf in that. The first character that you see. Oh, nice. Yeah, he's like sitting there and he's reading a newspaper and he's like shaking it around and looking around and Big Bird, you know, uh, 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 comes in, opens the door and uh, kind of bumps into Narf and it's it's spectacular. Classic. And Mark just did um, Oscar in the Parade last year. So if you All watch right, the yeah. Parade. Yes. Oh, nice. I was actually wondering who was Oscar in the Parade since. Uh... Batman. That's that's awesome. That man over there. Thank you, Joe. <laughs> so let's talk about Elmo. Sure. And we're going to come back around in a second. But uh, so um, obviously, like it, it, it was a huge thing that that you got, ended up taking over what is not just the most prominent character in on Sesame Street, but uh, one of the most uh, visible pop culture preschool characters. Um, that's <laughs> that's a lot of weight on your shoulders. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, that wasn't a question. In there. It was just, I'm just amazed. That, it, yeah. That, that, that. It, well, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was really scary. Um, I mean, it's scary whenever you have to take well, over a leg character, but that it was a big, it was a big tall order. So do you remember what the, like the audition process was like, or were you just like, Hey, this guy, we, we trust him and we know he can do the, you know, get the voice right. It was a little, and it was a little bit of both. Uh, I had never ever done the voice before. I had never thought about playing that character. I never thought about being Elmo or anything like that. Um, but I was in, you know, I was, I was pretty much in the fold at that point, you know, all the time I was there all the time. I knew all the guys and, girls and um had sort of proven myself as a somebody who wasn't gonna mess things up and uh we there was a very small internal set of auditions because they knew they didn't want to look outside they didn't want a big thing because they felt very very strongly about keeping it in the family and um i wasn't necessarily the person that they would have considered to be elmo um, but a couple of us went in and I was like, I don't know what to do. I have, you know, I, I worked, I, I, I worked side by side with Kevin all the time though. You know, I right handed for him. He gave me plenty of opportunities. He was there all the time. And he was really my teacher in terms of Sesame school. And so I was like, well, I'll try and pull from that, but I, I have no idea. And I did the first audition and I felt like I totally blew it. I just felt terrible. And, um, went to the next one and then was as surprised as anybody else when I got the call saying, we, you know, we think we're going to go with you. It, it, it wasn't for sure at first. They had tried some people out and other performers had done some things on the side because they were still trying to test and see um, who do we want to do this because no one knew. I mean, none of us knew what was going to happen. And um, so then they finally decided when the time came to, to have me play him and, uh, it was really scary, and it was it was very much a it, because it was so unexpected and all came so quickly. It was just a lot, you know. You are now at the front of this show, and you it's your responsibility to don't mess this up. And so, um, and the first two or three years of it, maybe the first two years, I would say those shows are just I can't watch them because they're so uh, it's it's pretty bad. <laughs> but. What, you know, it, it took a long time for me to sort of get comfortable and feel like not, don't have to focus on the voice so much. You don't have to focus on, you know, you could just sort of portray that character. Um, but yeah, it's, um, it's been a good, it's been a fun, interesting ride. I, I will say like from the fans perspective, 
you know, the, the fact that um, you are an incredibly talented performer and the voice is so similar, it seems seamless to us and everyone just seemed just really impressed with, with your work. So I think even uh, those first couple of years are- uh, That's amazing. very nice of you. I think, I, think, I think some of it is things that only I will notice, but some of it is very, there's just a difference in vocal quality. You can, you can, you can hear it. You can hear a very afraid, scared puppeteer in those first <laughs> Well, anyone would be. I mean, anyone would be. a lot of pressure. But, uh, you but, told me something once um, about uh, what it was that really made it click with, with the voice specifically. Um, I don't know if I'm prompting you enough to tell the story or if I should just tell it for you. Uh, I have a really bad memory. You might want to tell it for me. <laughs> Oh, well, about, like you, you told me that there was something that like you weren't quite getting about the like it was close, but it, you weren't quite getting there. And then you remembered that Kevin is from Baltimore. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, so the nice thing is, uh, Kevin is yes, Kevin's from Baltimore, and he's a very specific accent, which is an accent that I kind of shared when I was younger because I'm from Philadelphia. And if you listen to the Philadelphia accent and the Baltimore accent, they're really close. Um, and, and Kevin would just say things funny and we would be like, what did you just say? <laughs> um, but, and he had a, you know, he has a very specific way of speaking. And so, um, as from the technical side, that was really helpful, you know, from just the character standpoint, cause I don't have to tell you guys about, you know, it's character, not voice. You guys already know that obviously, but from, from the technical part of it, that was something that was, a, it was a nice hook that I could go, oh, right. That's, that's something. Um, and that he doesn't need to be, I think when you hear impressions of Elmo, everybody keeps one consistent high, high squeaky voice all the time. And that's not really what he does. He sort of ebbs and flows the lip all the way to the floor, right? Pushing, a, pushing the foot on the gas. And I think finding those mid ranges with Elmo and finding when he gets upset, actually there were the episode that I watched over and over and over again. And I remember when we did it, it was, it's a great episode. Um, and I don't remember the name of it, but somebody will know the name of it. Um, it's an, an episode where Elmo, um, is playing hot potato with Telly and, um, or is playing hot potato with, um, Abby and he just can't win. He's, he's getting frustrated and frustrated. He can't win. And so it turns into a Rocky parody where Telly is Burgess Meredith. And he's like, you gotta get, you know, you gotta, and Elmo's and there's a montage, but there's this whole thing where Elmo's really mean to Abby because he's upset that he hasn't won. He's frustrated that he's not won this game and he can't do it. And he kind of, he kind of takes it out on Abby who gets upset. And he sings this really sweet song about not meaning to have done. It's called Elmo didn't mean to. And I, when I saw that, I was like, Oh, that's who he is. You know, he, he, he that's who he is. He doesn't, sometimes he doesn't think before he does something and then he feels the way he feels. And it was just an interesting um, thing to watch, to really think about. It's not just Elmo's world all the time. You know, he's a much rounder character. You know, he's, he has emotions and feelings and thoughts. And, and yeah. once I started to get into that part of him, it was much more helpful, especially with like interviews and stuff like that. Oh well, yeah, of course the live stuff is, is some of the most fun Elmo material out there, both, both your, your stuff and Kevin's. You know, and that was always my favorite stuff that Kevin did anyway, when, um, because he was allowed to be himself, you know, and, and um, not that you can't be on the show, but, it's, it's nice to be able to go out and just be silly and not have to necessarily teach a lesson or something. He really goes out there and just is, is all out and crazy. And he's, so really funny. he's funny when you play him a little bit older. Yeah. Yeah. So there's always this balance too. Cause I always play him a little bit older than maybe people would like me to play him, but, but he does, he, he is witty and he's, and he, um, he's a little bit, saucy i like to say like he'll he messes <laughs> with people you know and but he only messes with people that he really cares about that he knows can take they can take it and he's just well it's never it's never malicious it's yeah exactly he's he, it's sort of like me poking at bert just poking and poking and poking just to get at him you know just to be silly and 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 kevin was so good with that on like fallon and there's uh there's this guy in australia called rove mcmanus who's this awesome guy who's come back and done stuff with us um, and his interviews, Kevin's interviews with Rove, are, I think are also on YouTube. And they're really funny, um, but sweet. I mean, it's that teasing thing that feels like a sweet young kid just being silly, too. And so um, those, are all, those are always my favorite things to do with Elmo or the live appearances, because you can be a little bit crazier. So do you remember the first thing that you did as Elmo? Um, hmm. I remember a couple of things, and I don't remember which one came first. 
Mm. And I only remember them because I remember being terrified. I did. So we've done, we had done a ride for, s... I'm going to get this wrong. It's not. Uh-oh. Dead air. Dead air. <laughs> we had done a, we had done a ride for, I think, <laughs> I got it. I got it. We've done a ride for Universal Studios, I think Shanghai and Singapore. I think it's in both of the parks. Uh, an L, or, uh, uh, Sesame Street dark ride. And um, we had shot a bunch of footage um, for the queue and for the cars themselves have Elmo in them guiding you and saying like, oh, turn left or whatever. And so we had shot a bunch of that in advance and then uh, they found that they needed more later. So I remember going in and like, I think maybe lip syncing some stuff to add some footage and then doing some vocal stuff. And that was one of the first things. And then we did another set of videos with park. It was a park ranger series with Murray. It was Elmo and Murray and they were park rangers for um, national parks foundation. And that I think was my first big shoot. Um, and that was really scary, but I remember did that. You poop, did you poop yourself? Did you poop yourself? During I that? didn't poop myself. But I wasn't sure it wasn't going to happen. Okay. Uh, it's, a, it's a solid maybe, is what you're saying. It's a solid maybe. Let's just say it's a maybe. Let's not put the word solid in it. But so I, I... I'm sorry, go ahead. No, no, no. I, I, um, so those are the... And then I think I maybe did some voiceover stuff. That's... I don't exactly remember. But those two things I remember very specifically being very early on. Um, and sure. I, and I, had, I, had, I had worked with the puppet before. So that part of it wasn't as nerve-wracking to me because... So, sometimes Kevin would just throw me the puppet. Like if he was directing, he would be like, "I'll do the voice, you do the puppet." Um, well, and that's uh, that's that's the history of Elmo is people just throwing the puppet from it's puppet funny, to puppet. It, it, that kind of <laughs> happened to me as well, and in sort of inadvertent way. It certainly wasn't there was there wasn't as uh, I'm, I'm sure he wasn't thinking anything much about it, but I, yeah. there was a time where I sort of had become that guy for a year or two where he would just like throw the puppet at me because um, nice, nice. you wouldn't have to think about it. He's like, okay, I'll just say it and you do it and it's fine. Usually he was directing and he didn't want to have to think about, you know, he wanted to focus on the shot and, you know, getting the shots right. Uh, if Elmo is flying through the air and you catch it, Joe, you're the next Elmo. Yeah. <laughs> it's like in a wedding when someone throws the bouquet and you That's have to get right. married. Thanks. You have to be the next Elmo. I'm just going to throw the puppet at my wedding. <laughs> uh, but... Uh, but yeah, it's been an awesome ride and I've done some amazing, super cool, bizarre things where you wake up and you're like, I can't believe I'm going here today. I can't believe I'm meeting these people. Yeah, uh, so that's what I'm going to you next is like, so now that you're, you know, kind of the start of the show, like you've gotten to meet celebrities, you've gotten to do all this travel, like who are some of the coolest people that you've, you've gotten to meet? Who are your new celebrity friends is what I'm asking. Right. Um, well, Jimmy, uh, Jimmy Fallon is always great. Um, He's always super nice and wonderful whenever we're with him. And it's always like, you know, he's just the coolest guy ever. Uh, Adele! Adele! Say, say what? Well. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Oh, I, I, <laughs> I'm saving bear, bearing the lead. I, um, no, I, he's been wonderful. Um, I, I've gotten to do a lot of stuff with um, Mrs. Obama. And those experiences were like, you can't. That's you incredible. Can't. I yeah. mean, it, it was something where I just felt like just remember this forever and enjoy it in the moment because it's kind of go like it's a blip. It's just one of those things. But we we've done we went to the White House for her a couple of times because she was very invested in our getting healthy campaigns and healthy food campaigns. Um, and so we I did press conferences with her. I met I met the president. Uh, I met President Obama, and he was just yeah. Like, what did he say to you? He's like, hey, I like to. Well, care. so we 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 were. Um, <laughs> We were doing like a, I don't remember what it was. I think we were doing something in the garden. It was like the first harvest of the year or something like that. And we all knew that this was probably going to be our last time at the White House with the Obamas. Um, and we were sitting, I don't know, people may not know this, but we've got those rolling dollies that we sit on. But we also, if we are stationary and we need to get lower than the dollies, because the rolling dollies are probably a good eight or nine inches tall. So that adds height to you when you're sitting on the ground. So if we need to get really low, we sit on these um, camp chairs, which are just foldable camp chairs. You just buy them at a camp store. They're not high tech or anything. And they're adjustable. So I remember Carmen and I were doing Elmo and Rosita in this haystack in the garden. And it was, it, you know, it was not glamorous. I mean, yeah, the White House haystack, sure. White House haystack. Yeah, exactly. It's like my, my sinuses are blowing up. There's bugs all over me, but it's the White House haystack. So who cares, right? 
So, you know, we're puppeteering and then someone comes over and says, please stand up. There's a special guest coming. And we're like, who could this special guest be? Because it was so low key. And we just thought maybe it's like some celebrity chef or something. Like we had no idea. Right. So, and Carmen goes. <laughs> and Meryl. Yeah. So, so Carmen turns to me and she goes, I bet it's the president. And I'm like, Carmen, that's not going to be the president. They would be like, it's not the president. They would say, you have to leave. The president's coming through. That's not, right. see that. Okay, now I feel better about me yeah. being such an idiot because I was like, no, come on. There's no way. That's what I thought. They're like, the president's coming. And so, of course, I was an idiot. I was totally wrong. She was totally right. We stand up, and there's Mr. Obama, and he's coming. He's just walking towards us. And we get up, and we're all getting a group picture. And, like, so I'm right next to him. Like, this, President Obama's right here. And I almost right here. And I'm thinking... I should back away. Like I, like I didn't want to get too close to him. And um, because security was going to tackle Elmo. That's the other thing. It's also a, it's a surreal experience because you know there's people in the bushes and you can see that. It's just like stand away, don't get too close. Yeah. Stand right outside the door to the to the war room. My well, that's true. God. But anyhow, anyhow, so I um I had Elmo on and. Uh, he was shaking everybody's hand, and he shook my hand awkwardly. Every time we have, every time we have a puppet on, it's really hard to shake per people's hands, and they always want to shake our hands, so we have to do like a left-handed sideways <laughs> handshake. And so, so I did that, and and he walked away, and I thought, well, that's it. I'm not gonna hear from him again. And then the next thing we're doing, we were shooting some segment or something under a table with with these folding chairs, and so Carmen and I are laying on the grass, you know, just doing our thing, and. Obama's leaving and he's saying goodbye to everybody. I'm all we hear is like, bye Obama, thank you. Everyone, you know, it's just screaming and applauding and stuff. And then I just hear behind me, hey, I like your chairs. And we look <laughs> back and it's President Obama looking at us and waving at us, Carmen and I specifically, and we were just like, oh my, I could not believe it. And just like the general, he didn't have to do that. He could have got all your chairs. Exactly. I was like, do you want one? <laughs> he, he, got a, he got a picture of it too, and he looks so, you know, Bommy's so slick. You know, he's wow. He's, yeah, he's just and, gliding through there. You can see him. I mean, so that's in the picture. He's like, hey, I like those yeah. chairs. So that's one of those experiences. And then the last one that I'll tell, because there's so many people. It's that thing. Everybody always says like, "Who's your favorite celebrity to work with?" And they're all great. I mean, every time they come to Sesame Street, they want to be there, and they're happy, and they're just excited. So it's always a good experience, but. Um, the last one was Adele. I recently met Adele and I had gone on a week long campaign because we were in Australia uh, doing some promotion and we were there for two weeks. And I had heard through somebody at, I don't remember who told me, but I'd heard somehow that Adele was doing shows while we were there. And I was like, great, let's get on this. Because it's <laughs> always been my dream for years now. Ever since I started doing Elmo, I was like, they have to do something together. I mean, it's, it's, yeah. this, it's the most obvious thing in the world that Elmo and Adele have to do something. So I came up with hashtag Adelmo and I was like, we got to do Adelmo. We got to like, and the, this could be like the new thing. Right. So um, we tweeted at Adele and um, Elmo tweeted at Adele and uh, within like a day or two, we got a call saying like, you know, we would really like to meet up somehow. And so they were so lovely. They gave us a backstage tour. We got to visit with, Adele and her people, and it was really special. And we got tickets to the show, and we I recorded some little bits. I don't know if they're ever gonna. I don't know. I don't know what's gonna happen with them. I don't think there's anything that's gonna happen with them, but we don't know. Um, but it was just a really sort of special experience, and she was exactly as you would want her to. I mean, she was awesome. For me, you're sitting there, you're sitting there on the floor with her and her kid and her backup singers, and they're just like you know best friends laughing and. Uh... My God, they had a sing along or something. Didn't she like sing a song with you? Yeah, it was it was really uh, it was really special. It was really incredible. And um, I, uh, for me, <laughs> because I'm such again such an idiot. We were we were late. We were we were we were like we were probably an hour away from the stadium, and we had to like we were white knuckling it because we're like this is it we have to get we have to get there if we don't get there by i don't know what, I don't know what the time was five o'clock let's say if we don't get he's there by five, everywhere joe he's and everyone that is ryan ryan is, well this was not me i mean it, we were an hour away we had had a gig and we were like we had to run out of the gig because they had said to us okay be here by five and we were like oh my god it's like 4 15 so we 
we go, we, you know, we just speed all the way down and I'm panicking, panicking, panicking. And I'm starting to think what happens with that. And I had to pee. I remember this very specifically. <laughs> this is a, this is a breaking news. Tough pigs, you get an exclusive. But so I was like, <laughs> and it's one of those things where you're, you, when you know you've got a 60 minute drive ahead of you and you're like, Okay, okay. Oh. Deal with it. Just deal with it. Just deal with it. That's every every day on my subway commute home. Yeah, like, exactly. My bladder knows that it's gonna have to hold for forty five minutes, but exactly. it wants to go now. Doesn't matter. So I was like, oh my god, okay, okay. So we get there, and thank God we get there just in time. And I'm of course the idiot goes, excuse me, where's the restroom? <laughs> <laughs> excuse me, Adele. Because I knew I was like, I can't, I can't, I can't. I all I will do is think about that. So I get there, and you know, I. I wash my hands and then uh, put the puppet on. And I immediately, I was, cause I, I love Adele. She's like one of my favorite people ever. So nervous, flop sweat, flop. <laughs> so ridiculously that it was like the puppet guy that sweats, right? And I'm like, I'm like oh no, it's so embarrassing. Regardless, it was a wonderful time. It was, um, her whole team was amazing. And yeah, she sang, she knew all the songs. so. Like we sang, I don't want to live on the moon and oh, that's crazy. neighborhood. And I wish these things, unfortunately, I don't think they're ever going to get out, but I wish they would because they're really sweet and really lovely. Um, well, you got to get her on the show next uh, season, you know, ever. Uh, yeah, let's, let's just do that. Yeah. Let's just get Adele on the show. So easy. Uh, but those are, those are my top, my top ones. And Definitely. obviously there's plenty of others, but those are the ones that I kind of will never forget. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. So, almost as famous as Elmo is is Frank the horse. <laughs> so, almost, He's just almost. And if I, I I have to know Frank is for those of people who haven't seen Frank the horse videos. Uh, the, first of all, you should pause this video and go watch a couple of them because they're they're so delightfully bizarre. And I have to know where Frank came from. Oh boy! Well, he he. Uh... The soul of Frank started in another character when I was down in uh, Orlando. Um, and this was through uh, John, John Kennedy had, uh, had built a, a dog puppet for this uh, couple that ran a closed circuit television station in Orlando. And uh, John was you know he was just busy and he said look i don't have time to do this do you want to do this character for these people and uh i said well okay sure um so i hooked up with this uh, this uh, uh these people uh uh and uh it was mac the dog and he kind of had a you know at the time i was always doing a, a jimmy, jimmy stewart uh, impression jimmy, jimmy stewart voice so, so that's where it started, but it was more of a kids, kid friendly uh, uh, thing. But, it, but that was fun too because they had access to all kinds of things. Like I got to go to uh, NASA for a, a shuttle launch and be on the ground with this, uh, this dog puppet while the shuttle <laughs> is going off behind me in the shot. And it was insane. I mean, the, the, the ground is shaking. I, I didn't even get to see it. I, I got to watch the, the tape, but. Yeah, you know, once it happened, I could turn around and see the the smoke in the air. But yeah, you know, we did a, a lot of stuff, but it just you know it never went anywhere. It was just you know uh, constant uh, free work. <laughs> so and for, for a character that I didn't own, and uh, I, I eventually just thought, you know what, I I really need to take this because I had spent a lot of time developing this this character. So I thought, you know, I, I really need to transfer the soul of Mac the dog to something else. And so there, there, there it came. I mean, I just, I think that horses are funny animals. Uh, so I, I, I'm, I, I, I can draw, I can't build. Uh, so I, I drew uh, Frank and uh, handed it to John Kennedy, who built the, uh, the first Frank puppet. And then he was born, uh, but uh, but I didn't really do anything with him until now. This was when I was in Florida, I, so that I had moved back up to uh, 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 Connecticut, and this was towards the, the the end of the of the aughts, 
uh, during the Seymour's Playhouse time, uh, where I kind of started doing the Frank videos with Frankie Cordero. Uh, so that's that's really the the genesis of uh, of Frank, and we made a lot a lot of videos that we look back on now and uh, cringe. I mean, it, it it really feels like oh. Boy, can you believe we were doing that back then, Ryan? I mean, it's, it's, it's like the it's like watching Salmon Friends now, you know, like oh my god, because uh, <laughs> uh, we've we've really upped our game. And uh, Frank is really kind of, I mean, since I've teamed up with uh, Ryan as Dylan Gale, we've kind of married a, a group of our characters together, and Frank's just kind of fused into that uh, into that group. He's 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 one of the ensemble now. Yes. He wouldn't. Uh, he wouldn't say. He would say he's the leader. But yeah, he's really the. Uh, he's really part of the, our little group of, of nine. So I do want to. I, I I have to ask now about about Dylan Gale, which is your yeah. your current your, uh, passion project. Is that is that accurate to say? Yeah. Um. Well, we we've been doing stuff as Dylan Gale for I don't know what maybe two three years something like that. Well, we uh, kind of start with the podcast uh, yeah. a couple of years ago. We just thought, you know, we, we talk to each other all the time, and people who are around us when we do talk to each other seem to enjoy it. Well, it's that thing people kept saying, well, you guys should do a podcast, because we would be talking about stupid dork stuff or just stuff that happened during our day, and they'd be like, we have to make this a podcast. Stupid, stupid dork stuff, stupid non-dork stuff, all stupid. So they and, and but they were you know so we decided to do it and we did it for a little while and it just became a lot of work as you know to maintain something like that <laughs> and we we're like well this isn't even what we want to do we want to do the puppets we want to do a puppet series so um, so we haven't well, abandoned the podcast so but, much time, uh, you know editing those shows yeah and, uh, we were like what we like doing it we, we really enjoyed it but it is a ton of work doing all the the, the sound effects and the editing and it, you know it was a, it started to feel like a full-time job and we're like well if we keep doing this we're never going to get our, our puppets characters out so yeah so then we started slowly writing sketches for them and putting them in the podcast and then when we would get together we would try and shoot things but we had such limited resources and we'd have like two lights and a camera and, you know so and it's like well how do we x's so right, so there was a lot of traveling. Problem of distance. So. so we decided to really double down and say, "Look, let's 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 do what we want to do. Let's just do it." And um, so, for the past, I guess maybe year and a half or so, we've been really pursuing doing a series. Um, we just shot a pilot with an amazing crew and a really good group of performers, and um, it's it's a, it's it's really fun. It's the biggest thing we've done. It's the biggest scale thing we've done. And it's, um, big. Oh, big. it's a show called the idiot club and, and there's um, we can't exactly say what's happening with it yet, but it's looking like we're going to hope that more of that's coming soon. But in the right. meantime, we're, we're, we're just trying to do stuff to get people acquainted with the characters. So we've been doing a lot of these live chats like we're doing right now. And we'll do those with the characters. We try and do them once a week, but with our schedules, it gets a little crazy. But um, so, but that's an opportunity for the, the fans, we have a very small fan base that we're hoping to grow, and, and it's a nice opportunity for the fans to ask the characters questions directly. And you do uh, the, the two of you performing puppets, and then Frankie Cordero is himself, is that right? And Frankie Cordero is yeah, a moderator. Together, and Frankie plays you, Joe. Yeah. Frankie. So I'm, I'm, or I'm playing Frankie. Yeah. You're playing Frankie. Or maybe Frankie is performing me right now. You don't know. Let's look. Just, at, let's 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 pan out and see the whole frame. There you go. I'll just lower the camera. <laughs> no, you can see the um, yeah. But but yeah. So Frankie, are, they both wear glasses, so they're that's true. Apart. Pretty much the same guy. Pretty much the same. We all know each other. Gla us glasses wearing people. Right. Pretty much. Pretty much. But uh, Frank, yeah, Frankie is also now sort of a character on the show too. He kind of plays a character of himself. So um, he's that's our, we. He, he's our Luis of. Uh, of, of Dylan Gale. Right. Of the club. So, uh, so yeah, that's what we've been doing lately is the Idiot Club stuff, and we're hoping to get more stuff happening soon, but uh, right now we're focusing on these live chats just to get people um, seeing the characters on a consistent basis. Um, right. And it's 30 minutes. It's, it's a 30-minute improv show, so um, it's it's sort of like we okay. don't know what's going to happen until it happens. <laughs> <laughs> but um, Where can people find that? So if you go to our Dylan Gale Facebook page, 
Um, we would love it if you liked our Dylan Gale Facebook page, if you like what you see. And every, uh, we always announce the day before. So um, it's usually on Thursdays, but depending on our schedule, sometimes we have it on a weekend, sometimes we have it on a day. So if you like the Dylan Gale Facebook page, you will find it there. We also have a Dylan Gale YouTube page. Um, it's called the Dylan Gale Idiots. So if you can find that and see our old, we've got old clips on there from a couple years ago. We've always keep and archive the old, the um, previous live shows. Um, so pretty much anything Dylan Gale go to those two places. Yeah, and we have built a up a pretty good library over the past, uh, I'd say, year of, of stuff. So it's Thanks. very silly. It's very um, uh, Muppet fans will obviously enjoy it, but it's kind of surreal and and bizarre. And uh, it's it's a little more out there than the Muppets, uh, so it's it's definitely it's definitely got its own sort of flavor. And I think I think I think hopefully the Muppet fans will enjoy it. So I would well, and, and I think it's nice too for for the two of you who um, you have been working with the Muppets for a long time. You're obviously huge fans, but you're doing something that there might be a little bit of inspiration there. But you're definitely trying to do something new. Which yeah, very much. A lot, of, a lot of Muppet fans would think like, "Well, we want to recreate the Muppet Show. We want to do our own version of Sesame Street or Fraggle Rock." And it's you guys are trying to create. You have created something that is specifically yours and unique. Yeah, uh, that was. That's always we're always very conscious of that, you know. And and that, in fact, the, when we did the pilot, we looked at it and we went, "Oh, we gotta scale back a little bit and start changing some stuff." And and um, because it's more interesting anyway to come up with something new and and what what. For us, it's very character based. You know, it's very much, um, it's less about, because we always, you know, we say, you know, it's, we're going to get associated with the Muppets or whatever because it's puppets, but it's really the characters that are, are unique to us because they're very, they all come from us specifically. So that's right. sort of, well, I think that's where our, our strength is, is in, in characters because we're not really great at, at story. You know, we're getting a, a beginning and a middle and an end. We, we tend to have problems with that. We're getting, we're certainly getting there, but our, our, our focus is, is character based. So, and yeah, and, and we do want to, we are fans of the Muppets. We love the old Muppet show and that style and that sort of sense of anarchy. And so there's a bit of that in it mixed with Definitely. all of our inspiration. Neither of, us, neither of us would even be doing puppets. I, I'm not, I don't think without, you know, being influenced by Jim. Right. Um, but yeah, definitely check out the YouTube page for that and the Facebook page. And, and um, we're going to hope to get the live chats a bit more consistent soon. So definitely keep an eye out for those. Cool. Well, uh, is there, as we're wrapping this up, is there anything else you guys want to, uh, to, to promote coming up or um, any messages you want to uh, deliver to, to your fans? Um, that's, well, that's a good question. Um, just uh, tell your friends. If you like Dylan Gale, please tell your friends. We, uh, we Tell your friends. And we have a slow, we have a we have a growing fan base, and we would love to get a, get the word out as much as possible. Um, and let's see what else is happening. I uh, if you're going to be in LA, please come to the Hollywood Bowl. I will see you there. I'm, I'm doing shows with the Muppets there, and um, there's some other really cool Sesame stuff coming out soon. And uh, so just stay tuned. Great. Yeah. And we like you. We like you. Very and we much. like. You. Oh, thank you to all you, the fans you, who show up every week for the Google Chats. I mean, you really help us keep uh, keep the show rolling. So yes. we, we can't tell you how much we appreciate it. We, we try to get to, to everybody, and we know that we skip, you know, and that's all Frankie Cordero's fault. So please uh, send all of your complaints uh, to, uh, to Frankie Cordero.